Hey, coming up right now, a burglary suspect is confronted by cops during a bathroom visit. We're going to tell you more about this well, bizarre arrest. Also coming up, it's a bird, it's a plane, nope, it's a flying car. This new car with wings backed by SpaceX has already hit a sales record for pre-orders. I love it. All right, a little bit later on, a pilot can add another title to his name as he leaves the cockpit to actually help with a medical emergency during a flight. Daily Flash starts right now. Get ready for trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash with your hosts, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. The fun starts right now. This is Daily Flash. Andrea Jackson. And I am Mitch English, welcoming you to Daily Flash. So glad to have you along. We'll be checking in, uh, of course, with Matt Doolittle uh, and see what's going on in his life. And uh, Matt, you know, uh, just over the last few days, I always feel like I'm a smarter man every day in, in learning something. Oh, okay. You know, every day. Yes, and yeah, Maddie, sure. have you learned anything the last few days of being, you know, this new life that you're in? I can just say no to stuff now. You're, I can just, yes. No, I don't you're want to. So, yeah, you got the ring. You're yeah, married I got the ring. I, I, I don't want to. I, 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 no, no. It's a, it's a great feeling. Isn't it's it? a good feel. They did talk about, I, I heard this that. study recently about um, newly married couples. And over the long term, the guys get fatter than the women do because the guys get more settled. And I would have thought it would have been the opposite I would have accepted. Well, I, yeah. I do know that, yeah, you feel like, well, you're comfortable you're and you're comfortable. not, you're out of your fighting yeah. class now and so you can do you get whatever. get nothing to fight for. Yeah, right, no, you're right. <laughs> the, the hunt, the chase is over, right? So yeah. Just a for, just fair warning I, I there, got Matt. the gazelle, so now I can get the gut. There, yeah, you, there go. you go, Very bingo. Nice. Um, check this out, Target has decided to compete with Amazon. Oh, how so? They are going to start a membership program Okay. On Target, it's called Target Circle 360, and they will deliver same day if you have a certain kind of membership okay. from their online stores. You've got to be a member. If you pay, I think, $49 to $100, that will determine what membership you get with the Target 360, and that will also determine, you know, what kind of services you get, but very similar to Amazon. They are also, I went to Target yesterday, that's why Did I know you? this, but, and they have, uh, everywhere you shop, they have these little signs, but they're also saying that you, you, if you sign up now, they'll give you 15 bucks so they're really wanting oh. people to Ooh. to jump aboard of this and you can actually understand because that's where everybody's going yeah right? I love Target but I have the hardest time on their website I don't know oh, if, really? it, if any of that's changed but I mean I'm, I'm assuming it has since they're you know really going full force with this new program but probably more, more than likely yeah. so that'd be the case you're gonna see more and more delivery places yes. all, all the time let's jump into the big show and to the news an alleged burglar went from the bathroom to the gray bar hotel a police department in Colorado just released body cam footage of officers confronting a suspect while he was using the bathroom. Now, that's a, th th this is uh, breaking code. I mean, if something in the bathroom, you leave him alone. But the video shows a heavily armed police officer busting open an interior door to reveal a man sitting on the Oh! Lawn. And he goes, I'm on the toilet, bud. Oh, oh. And then he puts his hands up. Oh. The man stands up with his hands up and pants down, uh, oh. follows the oh. officer's commands to surrender. Yeah, he did it. The alleged perp was taken to jail where he was charged with secondary degree burglary, and he also had to do some paperwork he didn't get to finish while in the <laughs> his paperwork. I, he didn't get to finish his paperwork. Right. Now, that is so, like, if somebody buzzed in the house, that's where I would be, and I'm like, hey, and the first off, I would not be able to ever do that in front of somebody. No, uh -uh. And I, and I, I, I wonder... Hey, can I finish here? <laughs> you know, there's guys, so much to that story. Right? Guys, I'll cooperate. I want, uh, Time out. I'll cooperate. I don't want the rash. Give me five minutes. Give me five minutes. I don't want the rash. And he was, yeah, the cops were afraid to go in and go, ah, who died in here? Well, it's not murder. It's just break. It's entering, breaking and entering. That's it. I went to a steakhouse. It's fine. Oh, my I God. I murdered that steak today. No. Uh, was he All wearing, right. um, you know, uh, Mardi Gras beads? It did look like it that, did. right? <laughs> Is that a whole new thing? I wonder if there's any kind of, if, uh, he looked like he was partying, let's just say that. Yes. But that's, that's not for me to decide. Well, a line of new high of flying cars is selling out. The SpaceX back line of autos with wings carries a price tag of around $300,000. So far, more than 2,800 units have been sold, breaking record expectations for pre orders. ALF Aeronautics said pre orders for its Model A total more than $850 million. bucks. The 850 pound two seat car is an electrical vertical takeoff and landing car, which 
can reach speeds of 110 miles per hour wow. in the air and up to 35 miles per hour on the ground. It's called an LSV, a, a low speed vehicle with the focus on achieving faster speeds in the air. Customers can put down a $150 deposit for the vehicle. Last year, the FAA granted the Model A a special certification and it will allow the company to fly the car in limited locations. Aleph estimates a driving range of about 200 miles and a flight range of about 100 miles. Expect to see the prototypes flying in the air early next year. The Jetsons have arrived. They have. Um, and, and, you know, we already have Rosie the Robot, my little vacuum cleaner that goes yes. around everywhere. Um, but do, do you have to have a, if you said this, I apologize, but uh, do you have to have a special license, That's I a really good question. You know? I don't know. I would assume that you would. And obviously, you're competing with air traffic like drones. And if you know anything about the whole drone situation, you have to be so careful where you fly mm -hmm. a drone. You have to be licensed. You have to, in some cases, file a flight plan. Do, right? I mean, so you have to file, you have to follow all these FAA regulations. So I assume with this company and their, and their new line of flying cars that maybe they're only allowed to fly in certain locations. And, and maybe with GPS and that sort of thing, yeah. the fact that it wouldn't allow you, it, like the, it would have the AI to know that th this is an area I can't fly, maybe yeah. route you around it and keep you at a certain height, I imagine that's where it's at. Because I know that the they already have those um, uh, airlifts, uh, basically Uber Air, yeah. where it's just like a one person and it picks you up. It's a drone, basically, and takes you to where you want to go. They've had it. It's over in uh, Central Florida, over in Tampa. They actually have this already uh, pilot program already in, in place. So you could see that this actually could be mm -hmm. something very formal. Flying cars are a terrible idea. People can't drive <laughs> on the ground yet. I almost had a Disney bike, a bus swipe me off the road the other day <laughs> when I was out of the parks. But if so it, like, you can't, no, people can't fly. I don't care. If it gets people off of I-4, I'm fine <laughs> yeah, with it, yeah, man, right? You know what? I'm with you. That <laughs> too. Well, and speaking of flying, a pilot just added another title to his name after helping a mother deliver her baby mid-flight. The pilot was flying a passenger plane to Bangkok when someone was calling for a doctor. The cabin crew told him a woman was in labor in one of the airplane bathrooms. Wow. So he gave his co-pilot command of the plane, rushed to the aid of the mom, to be when he realized she was in labor. Moments later, he delivered a baby while the plane was still thousands of feet in the air. Definitely a first during his 18 year career as a pilot. And being a father himself, he said it was quite an experience. I, I, I imagine so. And uh, hopefully he'll, he'll get a little recognition name wise. Yeah. Maybe we'll see that. I don't know. But I always remembered uh, early, maybe like in the 90s, the 2000s, or whatever, when you booked a flight, it, they, they discourage if you were six weeks. Yeah. Uh, from being having a child or pregnant yes. after that. And I'm hearing more and more of these stories of these people that of these ladies that are pregnant going on these flights and that what does it do in the air to make them like I gotta go. I have no. I have got to have this baby out of me. You do have to wonder like are they doing it so they can intentionally go into labor on the plane? Maybe they've waited so long they're like, I can't take it anymore, <laughs> whatever it takes. There's a there's a restaurant in Los Angeles that's famous for a salad that they serve I've at lunch that, yeah. and the dressing that comes with it. And everyone swears that if you are pregnant and if you've yet to have the baby, you go and eat this salad and within twenty four hours you have the baby. And and, and, and it's documented yeah. that has hap has happened yeah. many, many times. I think maybe a little psychological, maybe, maybe it could be that. So well. I wonder if the, the plane thing is similar to that. Listen, um, <laughs> that is a very, uh, you wonder if, if it does something because your psyche is, I, I, I don't, yeah. don't want to have this baby on the plane and then maybe yes. you're thinking about it and that's what happens, who knows. Um, all I know is that um, as far as that salad that you're talking about, mm -hmm. on the other side of that, there's one dude uh, that has actually eaten 34,000 Big Come Macs on. in his life and he's had more than his share of babies. Uh, the <laughs> 70 year old Don Gorski, we've talked about it here on the show because he has the world's best sideburns. Oh, uh, he's a retired gosh. prison guard. Says that he hasn't had any health issues after eating a steady diet of burgers. One Big Mac, it's made up of two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, pickles, cheese, onion, uh, all between a sesame, sesame seed, seed bun. bun. There you go. 590 calories. That's this, it. That's all you have for that thing. To stay healthy, he walks six miles per day, ditched the fries that came with that order. He has had a the very first Big Mac almost 52 years ago in May hair. of 1972. Uh, he continues to eat it. Ever since that day, he has been eating, and every day he's had had a Big Mac. And he actually keeps the containers and even the receipts that he gets from it. Obviously, well wow. known at his local McDonald's. They have a photo of him on the there wall. There he is, right there yeah, on the wall. Check him out. It looks, looks like an older picture, too. Yeah. He even proposed to his wife, Mary, in the McDonald's parking lot. 
They started off eating nine Big Macs oh, a day. Wow. That is a lot. Yeah. And had to cut down to just two, one for lunch, one for dinner, but still eats them. And uh, there's people that can do that. They can eat the same thing over and over. I don't know how they do it. I mean, um, but uh, there's something psychological that they can look beyond that and they crave it, I guess. He looks like he's in pretty good shape. Six so miles I mean, a day walking. That that helps tremendously, I, I assume. But I, I, I was surprised at the, the few calories in a Big Mac. Yeah, I would have thought more. No, I was thinking closer to like 800. Thousand, yeah. yeah. Or even 1,000. I guess when you eat the fries and if you have a Coke that with that as true. well. That adds to his luscious it. hair. That's what, it, that's what it, it, it is. And the, the protein. Yes. The protein. Yeah, I like that. Mary McCheese is very happy to have him. He ever gave me the key to the, the McDonald's. <laughs> to get the badge. Right, yeah, exactly. More <laughs> Flash. Uh, we got trendy news and entertainment all coming up right here on Daily Flash. Time for our round table. Can you imagine being married couple and your spouse says, hey, listen, we ain't engaging in any little hanky-panky. I want my own room. <laughs> well, what oh would you say to that? That's actually the situation that Ryan Crawley is in after asking his wife to start using separate bedrooms since they already have separate bathrooms. Mm. But his wife drew the line and said, no way. Mm -hmm. It might sound a little weird to some folks. All right, but many couples actually across the country are sleeping separately under the same roof. Jackson, how do you think that mainly this choice impacts relationship dynamics as well as quality of life? Gosh, I think I think couples do the separate bedrooms for separate reasons, but I think um, intimacy is still important, whether it's cuddling or whether it's quote unquote the hanky panky. So I think that there's something that needs to be discussed there. Now, if it's a snoring issue or a yeah. health issue or a scheduling issue where you're up at midnight and your spouse doesn't get up until 8 a.m., that makes sense to me. But just because you're maybe going the separate ways, I think that only adds more distance in the relationship. I think so. And it's one of those where, you know, traditionally, we always think you're supposed to sleep in the same bed. Matt, yeah. your thoughts on this? Look, my parents were married for 37 years and for about 30 of that, they lived on separate ends of the house. Now, my dad had a non-normal job, so he was, you know, coming home at 3, 4 in the morning, and he snored like a bear. But, I mean, they were married for 30, 37 years, so, I mean, it worked yeah. out for them. It's completely it, opposite ends of the house. It, apparently, uh, it does that. It, it also means, though, if uh, one of person is in the other person's bedroom, it's a reason why they're there. So, I mean, maybe that's a, <laughs> like a visual cue, I guess you could say. Um, I, I could see, like, if you, let's say you had a spare bedroom, in the house and it you know there's times where like you know i have these allergy of fits that i have or, or i can't sleep at night and i want to watch tv so i can go to sleep you know getting up and going to the other room um but there is something always different i know liza tells me he's like oh, i miss you being next to yeah. you and i wake up in the morning so i could totally get that however as as both of you said if it works for the couple you know who's for us to, to judge yeah. right I mean, what's different than two couples living long distance relationships in separate cities, right? If they're That's married and one lives in New York and one lives in LA or whatever, you're technically in different bedrooms, right? Separate, definitely separate bedrooms in that case. And, um, yeah, but Matt, when you got scared at night, whose room did you go into? I went to my mom. My dad was, I, I, let, I let him do whatever he was doing in that room. I, I didn't go in there a lot. Oh, boy. All right. Bobby's smart. Actually, really yeah. smart. All right. Thank you, uh, guys. And, of course, we'd love to hear what you have to think on this subject. We'd love for you to drop us an email. Go to our website, dailyflashshow.com, or you can just drop us an email. Just a simple flash at dailyflashshow.com. Let us know your thoughts. Separate bedrooms, good idea. Do you at your house have your own bedroom? And is it working out great? We'd love to hear your thoughts and we'll share with it with our national audience right here on Daily Flash. What else we got? Mitch, thank you. We have got to talk about groceries and shopping right now. Skyrocketing inflation is making life difficult for millions of Americans across the country. So where does it hurt the most? Well, the trip to the grocery store is what most people say. Business Insider's Jennifer Streaks is here with some tips on how to save some money on your next trip to the supermarket. Jennifer, welcome. Good to see you. Good to see you too. <laughs> so for most everyone, the sticker shock when it comes to buying food at the grocery store is no joke. Even the CEO of Kellogg is saying more families are turning to cereal for dinner. How can we save money on groceries? Well, the first thing you've got to do is take advantage of all coupons, sales and discounts. Most grocery stores, they have a weekly circular. They're gonna tell you in advance what is on sale make sure you grab that. If you can download coupons to your phone, if you have a grocery store that uh, takes advantage of loyalty points and sends you coupons to your phone, take advantage of that. Shop all sales, discounts, back to school sales, stock up sales, fall, winter sales, every sale, take advantage of it. 
We know one. We know one of the biggest uh, tips is never go to the grocery store when you're hungry. <laughs> what are some other common mistakes people make when grocery shopping? Make a list first. Do not just go to the grocery store empty-handed. Everything on the shelves are, go are going to look great. So make sure you have that list. Stick to the list. No impulse buying. Know the um, you know the the aisles that are right close to the cash register. They put those there because that's for the impulse shopper, the person who's going to buy that extra stick of gum or that magazine or that hand sanitizer that they don't need. Make sure you make a list and stick to it. And what about shopping just on the outside perimeter? Isn't that one of those things where they say, if you just stick to the outside perimeter of the grocery yeah. store, that'll save you some cash? <laughs> make sure that you do that. Stick to the outside <laughs> perimeter. Also shop maybe a little below eye level. They put everything that's higher priced right at eye level. They want that to be the first thing that you see. So maybe the aisle down or even the aisle that's right above the floor. Okay, yes. shop there for some of your cheaper items. Yeah, they always get me on those end caps too when they have those fancy displays. What other impacts exactly. would you say technology will have on shopping habits? I think that it's going to make it easier if you want to use it to save money because you can now look in advance to see what's on sale. You can shop your pantry first, which is what we should all be doing. Shop your pantry first and really see what items you need and then go online, use your phone to say, are these items on sale? Can I find a coupon? Can I drive a little further out? Can I use a farmer's market? to get the discounts and the sales. It really takes some strategy. One last quick question for you. What about a lot of these food delivery services? Mm -hmm. Are they saving you money? They only save you money if you use them. I used one of those services and it was so much food, so much of it spoiled in my refrigerator. I didn't even use it to its full capacity. So only use those services if it's really going to work for you, if it's going to work for your family or your household, because they're expensive. Excellent advice. Great information, Jennifer. For more information and money-saving tips on grocery shopping, check out our website at dailyflashshow.com. You can also find more information on Jennifer at businessinsider.com. We'll post this complete interview with all the grocery, grocery shopping tips that you need the next time you make your way to the store. Stay with us. We're back right after this. Welcome back to Daily Flash. I'm Mitch English. Now, look, we all know that uh, electric cars run off batteries, but what happens to those batteries when they're all worn out? In today's Car Smarts, Lauren Fix, the car coach, gives us the ins and outs of car battery recycling. The Biden administration awarded a $2 billion green energy loan to a Nevada company that recycles electric vehicle batteries. According to reports, recycling venture Redwood Materials, which was founded in 2017 by Tesla former chief technology officer Jeffrey Straubel, who secured the $2 billion conditional loan from the Energy Department's Advanced Technology Vehicles Manufacturing Program, a tongue twister, according to the Associated Press. The company said it is planning to build a $3.5 billion battery materials campus in Ridgefield, Nevada, that will recycle, refine, and remanufacture cathode and anode materials, such as nickel, cobalt, lithium, and copper. The Ridgefield facility aims to begin recycling late next year and ramp up component manufacturing capacity to 100 gigawatt hours by 2025, enough to supply battery materials for more than a million electric vehicles that the company stated. The Ridgefield facility is expected to supply battery materials to Ford Motor, SK in Kentucky, Toyota Motor in North Carolina, and Volvo and Envision in South Carolina as part of their expansion. Redwood Materials claims that its battery recycling facility in California has been a success. Redwood Materials is in the lithium-ion battery recycling business, and they are in the process of discovering the best way to reuse the materials inside batteries that are no longer serviceable to make new batteries without having to mine and process new materials. A great idea. Over the past year, it has collected used lithium ion and nickel metal hydride battery packs from Toyota, Ford, Volvo, and Volkswagen, as well as from auto dismantling companies. Redwood has accepted 1,268 battery packs from 19 separate 
battery electric vehicles and hybrid models, which presents challenges to recyclers as every pack is designed differently and cell formats are different as well. Redwood Materials was able to identify and recover end-of-life packs totaling approximately half a million pounds of materials. High-quality battery materials for anodes and cathodes are already being produced there and are being supplied to battery cell manufacturers in the U.S. The company states that lithium-ion represented the majority of the material types collected and they expect it will continue to grow as it is now the only type of vehicle battery on the market. As of today, the recycling process is already profitable for smaller batteries such as those found in consumer devices and production scrap. Redwood also accepts batteries from old phones, laptops, and alike. Battery recycling is expected to become increasingly important in coming years as EV battery packs start reaching end of life. The Inflation Reduction Act tied to the EV tax credit to battery source requirements, which stipulates that critical minerals must be extracted and processed and recycled in the U.S. or in a country the U.S. has free trade with, which would be Mexico or Canada, makes this growing area for investors. The person who gets this resolved will be the next trillionaire for sure. I'm Lauren Fix, and you can find this information on my website, carcoachreports.com and dailyflashshow.com. Hey guys, it's Furry Friends time, and it's already March, which means it's very close to spring for most of the country, so you have to get your pet ready to go outside and enjoy that fresh air, and you have to brush them. So here are a few tips to get them ready for, you know, especially you human dog owners. First, you have to start by brushing them. The beginning of spring is when most dogs start shedding their warm coats for their summer ones. The best way to help them transfer into the spring is to start brushing them regularly. Next up, if you don't use flea, tick, or heartworm medicines year round, now's the time of year you'll want to start back up as the warm as the weather warms up. Not only are they spending more time outdoors, but the pests come back out too, so it's easier to prevent them from getting it than to get rid of them. And while you're cleaning the rest of your house, make sure you're cleaning your pet's stuff too. Their beds, toys, anything they walk on or put their mouths on, basically, a good way to do this is to wash their stuff with a mild detergent or some vinegar, and that should be enough to get rid of the fur, dander, and the bacteria from their bedding. Now, you're also gonna wanna check your yard, especially for your dog owners or even your cat owners who let them roam outside, check your yard. Those of you up north where ice and snow build up over the winter, check your yard for hazards, inspect the fence for any holes or weak points so they don't get out, and see if there's any holes that develop in your yard so they don't fall into it. Here in Florida, it's always good to check for branches that may have fallen in the area your dog is familiar with because they may come around the corner and hurt themselves if they're used to a normal routine. Now, it's not only is spring a good time for cleaning, but it's also a good one to handle any of their paperwork that may have taken a back seat during the winter. Do a quick check on your pet's documentation to make sure all of their info is up to date, including tags, vaccines, and microchips. And lastly, ease into the exercise. If your dog's been locked up all winter and you've only let them go outside for a tinkle, it's probably not best to take them on a three mile hike. So make sure you build them up for that. So it's all good stuff to make sure your pets are spring ready and that's that includes you cat owners out there like me we got to make sure they're ready to get out there too mitch are you getting your cat your pets ready my cat wants to jump outside anytime the door opens so i totally agree everything you said there more flash coming up after this this is daily flash with your hosts andrea jackson and mitch english trending news and entertainment this is daily flash Hi, everybody. I am Mitch English. I'm Andrea Jackson. This is Daily Flash, your source for trending news and entertainment. And we'll be checking in with Matt Doolittle coming up in just a the little bit. The newly married the newly Matt married, Doolittle. Uh, Matt Doolittle, who went through dating life. You, you obviously have yeah. dated, and I've dated, and that sort of thing. And uh, uh, we're past the holidays now. When uh, my sister was, like, in her teenage years, where around Christmas time, she would start getting, like, like more boyfriends, right? Like, oh, And, and yeah. uh, I noticed this throughout sure. the years, right? So uh, a survey has come, and got me thinking about that. So a survey has come out, and they asked women, how many guys can you date simultaneously? Oh, gosh. Okay, uh, and the stats actually kind of surprised me. 
11% of those that they actually surveyed said they can date three dudes at the same time. Really? Simultaneously without having any kind of issues. 55% said, I can only date one person at a time. Yeah. So a little over half. Okay. And then 34% said they can date two different guys at the same time. Oh, wow. And I, to me, though, it would be like, I, I would yeah. have to have like a schedule, uh, you know, because I'd be like, and then when you're in a conversation, if you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. And that would happen so many times. I go, remember when we were talking about that? And they go, no, it must have been somebody else. Because I, I date gay guys. I don't know if you guys know that I voice. Did, I didn't know that. <laughs> you know, they talk, they uh, must have been somebody else. Shelby? Gale. Shelby and Dolly, where are you? When you're dating three guys at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> well, not three guys. <laughs> Here's uh, all anyway. I can think of. You know when you're texting people and then you end up texting somebody and you think they're another person? Yes. That would happen to me. Like, I, you know, the, hi, darling, how are you? And then they're like, well, who are you texting? What is this all? That would totally happen Didn't you text me. Hugo? The, the I've texted his wife. Your wife? was my wife, yeah. <laughs> Did you? I said, hey, beautiful. And I think I started saying, and he goes, well, I can't remember what he wrote back or something like that. I didn't know you, I didn't know you felt that way, miss. <laughs> You go our oh, executive wait. producer. Yeah. So yeah. You have to be careful for that. But I, I would I could see that I being a huge totally problem. I would totally mess that up. Just trying to get keep everything together. I'd say two to three if you're casually dating, not a bad thing. Yeah. But around the holidays, I'm I'm guessing you're angling for gifts. It, well, I think that's Or a sister. holiday date. I, I might have told on my sister, but I think that's what she it's was okay. doing. Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> well, an alleged burglar went from the bathroom to the Gray Bar Hotel. A police department in Colorado just released their body cam footage of officers confronting the suspect while he was using the bathroom. Okay. The video shows a heavily armed police officer bust open an interior door to reveal the male suspect in the office. I'm on the toilet, I'm bud. The, toilet. the suspect said calmly as he put his hands up. The man then stands up with his hands up and his pants down uh, as he man. follows the officer's commands to surrender. The alleged perp was taken to jail where he was charged with second degree burglary <laughs> and uh, a really bad fashion moment. Uh, there you go. Yeah, and he is, okay, they're not, Mar it's they're actually not kind Mardi of chain. Grub? They're not Mardi Gras beads, okay. but uh, some kind of chain. Jeez. Um, the worst absolute place. And then he had to do the penguin walk, which was even worse. Hang on, I'm not done. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, come on, guys. That <laughs> tops the walk of shame. 100%. 100%, yeah. And, you know, you better get be busted or you know for breaking in entering is a i guess a charge but like if it was something stupid you know and they just followed you to the house and then they busted while you're on the bathroom which cop has to go pull step. his pants up for him oh, yeah they would have to the, yeah. the, rookie, the rookie, rookie has uh -huh. to go pull, hey go pick his pants up uh -huh. and, and, absolutely oh, and, and hopefully that's all that you needed done <laughs> all right we go to the skies for these stories a line of new high-flying cars <laughs> selling out the spacex backed line of autos with wings carries a price around three hundred thousand dollars so far, 2,800 units have been sold, breaking record expectations for pre-orders. Aleph Aeronautics, they said their pre-orders for its Model A totaled more than $850 million. The 850-pound, two-seat car, it's electrical, vertical takeoff, and landing car. It can get up to speeds about 110 miles up in the air, but only 35 on the ground. So I can see it like a golf cart, basically. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Uh, it's called an LSV, mm -hmm. low-speed vehicle, with the focus achieving faster speeds up in the air. Customers can put down 150 bucks if you want to have a deposit. Last year, the FAA said, hey, we'll go ahead and give you that Model A special certification. It's going to allow that company to fly the cars only in limited locations. Aleph actually estimates the driving range about 200 miles. You'll get a flight range of about 100 miles. 200 miles at 35 miles an hour. That's a long <laughs> That's road a long. trip. <laughs> Expect the prototypes to be flying in the air sometime next year and uh, uh, hopefully we will crashing into your house crashing very in, soon I, 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 you're, we're going to hear and we're going to talk yeah. more and more stories about that I, I don't mean to uh, minimize it by saying golf cart in the skies but it's kind of you know when you think of a low speed vehicle that's a golf cart here in Florida 100% riding at 35 miles an hour stick around more flash after this If you live it, love it, or bite, we talk about it on Life Love Shopping. Former talk show host Ricky Lake is revealing her drastic 30-pound weight loss, and she claims it had nothing to do with Ozempic. Lake took to her Instagram page to share before and after pictures. Ricky says both her and her husband decided to go on a weight loss journey together. During a recent interview, Lake said that being fat worked for her during a successful stint at one time as a Hollywood actress. However, her health and well-being has taken center stage and she says she has never felt or looked better and I gotta say she looks phenomenal and she seems very very happy.
Well, forget working out. If you're drinking two or more sodas a week, experts say consuming just two 12 ounce cans of a sweet drink every seven days can erase any health gains made by your exercise. Health data from more than 100,000 adults were studied ages 30 and older. The result, well, the damage done by sweetened drinks cannot overcome the results from a 30 minute daily workout. Dating in the digital world can be a nightmare for both men and women. Enter the New York dating expert named Nico, who calls it like it is. He hosts a dating advice page on TikTok called The Daddy Academy. This video about how men pursue women has racked up more than 3 million views. Take a look. When a guy likes you, there's one speed he's going to take. Okay, welcome to The Daddy Academy. And it should look like this. Within 48 hours of meeting you on a dating app, okay, a few exchanges back and forth, he will get you off it, get your number, set a date for that weekend. Throughout the week, you will get consistent communication from him, not constant. You, know, you, might, you might skip a day or so, but you will know that for certain that date is happening that Saturday night. Go on this date. Have an amazing date. You have a great time. Coming out of that date, whether you text him first or he texts you, there'll be that communication on Sunday. He will say, obviously, if the date went really well, I would love to see you again. What are you doing this weekend? So plan the day for the following weekend. You agree? You're going out that weekend. There will be consistent communication throughout the week, not constant. Okay, so he's not blowing up each other's phones. Like, But you will hear from him maybe every day, every other day, but enough that you still feel confident about the way things are going. To go on that second date, repeat. More or less, it's going to be that same cycle. Okay, he's not going to be love bombing you. You're not going to see him four times in two weeks. Like It's this, this consistent one week date, a little chit chat, one week date, a little chit chat. And that will continue for at least the first month. After the first month, things can start to ramp up a little bit. For, but for those first you know, three dates or so, that is the speed it should feel. And it's good for you too, because like you don't know a guy until you've seen him over like a period of time. If you love bomb each other and you see each other four times in the first week, it's like you're just building this like connection based off of emotion and you're not really seeing how he operates, right? So you, you want to see how he operates as well, but a healthy masculine man, this is how he's going to go about pursuing you. Okay. That's not going slow. That's the proper speed going slow would be, you see him once a month. That's slow. Okay. That we don't like once a week for the first month. That's great. And they could always build from there. So there's no taking it slow. If a guy really likes you, this is the way he'll go about it, and it will only increase over time. More communication over time, more dates over time, and it will slowly build from there. But there's no such thing as going slow. This is the one speed. That's the man speed. Well, a Colorado ski town known for its laid back mountain chic has become so expensive, locals are being priced out of their own homes. Steamboat Springs, just three hours outside of Denver, attracts thousands of visitors every year thanks to its champagne snow and Old West charm. However, some are blaming Airbnb for wealthy vacationers and influencers driving up property values. The housing crisis has become such a challenge for the city of 13,000 that local hospitals there can't find anyone to hire. It's tried to hire an HR person Person, but the problem is that the $167,000 a year salary isn't enough for anyone to afford to buy a home there. Same goes for anyone working in the restaurant or hotel industry. Since 2020, the price for a single family home in Steamboat Springs has increased 80%. The average price is now $1.8 million. Add to that property taxes, which are up 86%. For more information on any of these stories, please head to our website, lifeloveshoppingshow.com. KSA Entertainment believes in our communities. We value those who have dedicated their lives to enrich our own. KSA Entertainment is proud to introduce our corporate initiative, KSA Cares. KSA Cares shines a light, gives a voice, and lends a helping hand through compelling awareness initiatives. From supporting veterans to environmental awareness, KSA Entertainment is proud to produce content supporting ways to help communities all across America. Our next guest is Haida Abeli, who has a new book out called You Got This, The Ultimate Career Guide for the Modern Professional. In the book, Haida addresses the challenges today's workforce is facing. Haida, welcome to Daily Flash. Thank you. So Happy the, to be here. The workplace has changed drastically in the last five to ten years. What are some of today's most common workforce challenges? Yes, there's a lot of pressure on employees today. Uh, most of this is due to the uh, increase in the pace of change at work. People need to be adaptive and resilient through all of that change. 
expectations regarding productivity have increased. You know, we have an always on work culture. Uh, people are tethered to their smartphones. That can cause a blurring of the lines between people's personal and professional lives so they can struggle with work-life balance, boundaries, managing burnout and stress. Almost half of employees work remotely or in a hybrid context. And there are upsides to that, but also downsides, social isolation, feeling invisible, feeling disconnected. It can be harder to advocate for yourself or get on the radar for a promotion. And then of course, there are the time eternal challenges of dealing with coworker dynamics, interacting with supervisors, uh, handling on the job conflict. And these can be really tough challenges. Maybe you uh, are in a conflict with a co Worker, or you're feeling marginalized, or your boss is abrasive, um, and there's less informal available to help people deal with those kinds of challenges. So they need help, uh, not just to survive at work, but to thrive. You say Gen Zers just entering the workforce are struggling the most. Yes, uh, Gen Zers struggle with engagement and motivation. Over half of uh, Gen Zers, the research shows, more than any other generation, are either ambivalent or disengaged at work. And that's a problem because we need to be engaged and motivated to do our best work. There can be communication challenges. A lot of what we do at work involves communication. And Gen Z grew up communicating via text and emojis to some extent. So <laughs> they can struggle with some of the complexities of face-to-face -face communication and social interaction at work just comes a little bit less naturally to them. Uh, Gen Zers who work remotely may not be getting the mentorship they need. It can be harder for them to network um, and be seen when they're remote. So and mentorship and, and networking are very important, especially early on in a career. And then remember too, that this generation was raised in an era of instant gratification. Yes. Think of all the social media likes and comments. And some Gen Zers can struggle with the realities of entry level positions, the routine nature of tasks, slower progression, lack of constant feedback. So those are some of the challenges that Z Gen Z struggles with. Yeah, I think there is like time management, there's boundaries, there's structure, all of that comes with learning to adapt in a work environment. And there's also a, a sense of entitlement. If you're just starting out in the workforce for this particular generation, they don't understand why they're not making the same amount of money as somebody who's worked there for 20 years, let's say. And constant urgency is also a big problem. What do you mean by this and how can we deal with it? Yeah, this is something that I hear a lot from people. Uh, they'll tell me, gosh, everything at work is a drill. And every email I receive from my boss need ASAP in the email subject line. Not all tasks can and should be urgent. So there's a lot of false urgency in the workplace today. You can't always be expected to strap on that superhero cap at Cape and save the day. So what I suggest is press the pause button ask to meet with your boss. You need to shine a light on this ugly underbelly of constant urgency. What is that? Burnout, decreased work quality, not focusing enough on the really critical work. So you need to highlight the negative business consequences of constant urgency. And you need to verify the true urgencies of tasks. So how do you do that? You help your boss uh, find a structure for better prioritization so that you can that true urgency. Ask probing questions. For example, what happens if this isn't done by tomorrow? What is the actual business damage that will occur? Or what business downside if we rush this task? Not every important task is urgent. So it's critical, and we tend to conflate the two. So it's critical really to get to the true urgency of tasks. The goal is uh, to avoid a power struggle with your boss, but also to commit energy to truly urgent tasks. Haida, great information. To get a copy of Haida's book, you got this. Please visit haida.abelli.me, or you can find the book at all major online book retailers. Mitch. Thank you, Andrea. Well, let's talk travel. We got a great spring break destination you got to add to your list. The 2024 travel guides are out and Miami is in. Perfect for your next vacation. From arts and culture to food and outdoor family adventures, Miami has it all. Check out the Flamenco Dance Festival, the Jazz in the Gardens or Montreux Jazz Festivals, or get inspired in the Miami Design District. Explore the dynamic culinary scene and stay in one of the five top 20 best U.S. hotels, according to the U.S. Travel News and World Report. Learn more at springinmiami.com. 
Well, as we continue traveling around, there's one couple that's flying their Italian Greyhound around the world, all to join them on their vacations. They even spent, get the $6,000 to have their pooch join them on their flight on a recent trip. Nora and Sean Taylor live in Dubai, and they refuse to go abroad without their beloved pet, Enzo. Now, during the last three years, three-year-old Enzo has traveled, get this, Hungary, Finland, Estonia, wow. the Netherlands, the UK, as well as Turkey. Goodness. Now, during Dubai's hot summer, the couple actually take six weeks off from work to travel with their pampered pooch in tow. Nora and Sean fly with Enzo from Abu Dhabi to the Netherlands for a few days before getting the ferry from the Netherlands to the UK. All in preparation for their latest trip, they spent $3,500 on paperwork and vet expenses Goodness. just so they could bring their dog with them. Now, despite the expense, Nora said it was worth it because they never want to leave their Enzo behind. I think they're being good uh, pet parents. Um, yes. I think a lot of times you want to get a pet, but you have to remember, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to go on vacation. Spring break's coming up. What are we going to do with my cats? And, you know, we have a plan for it and everything, but it's something you have to consider. Yeah, everybody talks about flexibility when it comes to, to pets, right? Cats are a little bit more low maintenance. <laughs> but if you've got a dog like they do, it requires constant care. And if you're not taking them with you, you've got to spend the money to board the pet. And I gotta tell you, that dog has better a better passport than I oh, do. Oh, one hundred percent, and it's treated really, really nice. Yes. And a good looking dog as well. Beautiful. Uh, you know, they have the resources, obviously, to yeah. be able to do that. But a lot of people or don't, and especially you're talking about like a thirty five hundred dollars just so that, that, that it, it can travel. Because, yes. you know, when you go to different countries, they got to make sure that the pet is safe. Sometimes, they, no matter what, they'll keep them in quarantine uh, like in a, for yeah. like a day or so or like at least a half a day or whatever. So keep that in mind, too. Little things you have to consider when you get your pet. Hey, we're going to be talking about what happens when you, your daughter, takes off to college. Welcome back to Daily Flash. When her only daughter goes off to college, an empty nest mother gets stuck taking care of her daughter's heartbroken ex-boyfriend who she can't stand. <laughs> this is today's must-watch movie, Suze. Wakey, wakey, little graduate. Oh, no. I'm so proud of you. You're my everything. Morning, Suze. Please don't call me Suze. <laughs> Sorry, Suze. Get what you see in this guy. I love him and he worships me. But honey, you're starting university. He's starting nothing. Happy grad, everyone. We're the emotional morons. Hi. Baby, I'm gonna miss you so hard. Wait, what? It's Take your it. favorite. I, I love you so much, sweetie. Do you feel like you're gonna throw up too, Suze? <laughs> Hi, honey. Calling to see how you're settling in. Hi, honey. Just checking to see if you got my care package. Me again. Hope you're still alive. Oh, I just feel like I'm losing her. You know? gotta see this as a whole new beginning. You're going through perimenopause. Think of it as things starting to wind down inside. Yeah, what if I don't want them to wind down inside? Gage jumped off the water tower. Wait, what? Can you go check on him? Suze, is that you? Hey, hello, Gage. Dad, this is Suze. Oh, your precious daughter. Yeah, she dumped his ass. She did? I was hoping that you could watch him until I get back. Me. Hi, Suze. This is going to be sick. You can stay in here. Nice. A lot of good times in here, Suze. Wake up. You're coming to work with me. Yo, good morning. Susan? Oh, hi, Paul. Who's your friend? This is my daughter's ex-boyfriend. Slash future husband. What the hell, Mom? Why is Gage staying with you? Sweetie, I have left you several messages. Hey, Suze, you okay? I'm taking you out tonight. Why would you bring me here? I thought it'd be good for you. So how do you and Gage know each other? He used to date my daughter. Ooh, look at you go! And I'm just trying to keep him alive. This one uh, goes out to somebody very special. Oh, dear God. He's a really good kid, Rick, and he just needs someone to just look out for him. If you like him so much, then why don't you keep him? Sweetie, I just wanted to see you, okay? Okay, well, I don't want to see you. Why do you let her treat you like garbage when you treat her like gold? Because she's the only thing that I have in my life, and I am terrified of losing her. You're the boss, shoes. Looks fun, for sure. Something to check out. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Be good, everybody. Go to dailyflashshow.com for more information on anything you've seen on the show.